Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to the latest Hurricane Tracker app Periscope video update on Hurricane Irma. And when we are done with this video, we will also post it on our YouTube page as well, so that uh, those of you who use the Hurricane Tracker app can rewatch this as well. All right, we uh, have some updated information on the track and possible impacts for Florida we wanted to talk about uh, with you all this afternoon as the forecast is becoming very serious and concerning now for the Florida Peninsula. First, let's take a look at Hurricane Irma. It's very near the Turks and Caicos, moving towards the west-northwest. And hurricane warnings are in effect uh, for the Turks and Caicos, Central Bahamas, Northwestern Bahamas, Northern Coast of Cuba, Northern Coast of Hispaniola. And if you haven't seen Irma on satellite, take a moment and look at this storm. It's bigger than Andrew. It's stronger than Andrew. And it's a very powerful hurricane, and it is headed towards Florida for a landfall Sunday morning. That's almost certain at this point. Very dangerous storm. Let me give you the latest information on uh, Irma. Winds are 175 miles per hour. Irma is still a Category 5 hurricane. Winds are, uh, excuse me, it's moving to the west-northwest at 100, I'm sorry, it's been a long couple weeks. West-northwest is 16 miles per hour. Minimum pressure is at 922 millibars. And the center is located about 40 miles south of Grand Turk Island. We had some updated watches that were issued today. I know you can't see the right color on here, but the shaded region down here, this is storm surge watches in effect for the southern portion of the Florida Peninsula along with the uh, Florida Keys. We could see water rises of 5 to 10 feet, even higher if the storm is stronger than forecast. I believe right now the National Hurricane Center, let's take a look at it, when this system makes landfall, the National Hurricane Center is forecasting winds to be 155 miles per hour when it makes landfall in South Florida. And it could even be a little stronger than that. Here's the latest track from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, the European model, the ensembles, the uh, GFS, Canadian, all the models have shifted west. They pretty much now all agree that Irma will move towards the west-northwest, make a turn on Sunday morning, possibly start the turn Saturday night, and make landfall uh, along the southern coast of Florida, possibly even in Miami, as a major hurricane. And it will then move up through the uh, spine of the Florida Peninsula. Still be a hurricane by the time it gets to Georgia on Monday. So this storm is not going to move into Florida and then weaken quickly down to a tropical storm. The reason is it's a large, powerful storm with a very large wind field. And because the Florida Peninsula is so narrow, it can still draw in moisture from the Gulf and the Atlantic. So we are based in Atlanta, Georgia, and the forecast we've seen is we could receive Category 1 winds greater than 75 miles per hour even here in northern Georgia. So I want to make this point real quick. If you're in the interior southeast, if you're in southern Georgia, middle Georgia, northern Georgia, South Carolina, western North Carolina, even into Tennessee, go ahead and stock up on supplies. Prepare now. There will likely be power outages and trees down into the interior southeast United States. Okay, we just wanted to make that point. All right, these images I'm going to show you now are courtesy of weatherbell.com. It's a fabulous paid service. I highly recommend you check them out if you're interested in weather. Uh, they show some really detailed graphics. And at this point, the European model has been so good, and we are within now of 72 hours, we can start talking about possible specifics here. Now, what I'm going to show you is not going to be the exact forecast. These will change just a little bit, but it will give you a general idea of what we're looking at. Um, so let me uh, go here to Sunday morning about 8 a.m., the European model, again, not only this model, but other models are forecasting a very strong Category 4 hurricane to make landfall uh, near the Florida Keys, or it could even be closer to Miami. If you notice the brown colors on the edge here, anything in brown is winds over 80 miles per hour. 
And the, the lighter shades here are hurricane force. And the pink shades are in the 90 mile per hour range. And then you get into the 100 and even the 130 mile per hour range here near the center. So what I want you to take away from this image is look how wide the wind swath is of hurricane force winds from this point all the way to this point with 80 to 90 mile per hour winds all in this area here in the brown and the kind of pinker shading. So I'm going to move this into Sunday afternoon. Hurricane force winds are taking over the southern, uh, all of southern Florida from Fort Myers to Miami, West Palm Beach, Fort Lauderdale, all the way up the coast. And then by Sunday evening, moving further inland. Let me go to the next image here. We'll kind of pick up where we left off. So I'm going to put this into motion. You can just see how that area of hurricane force winds, the red colors, covers the entire state of Florida, even Tampa, Orlando, Cocoa Beach, Cape Canaveral, Gainesville, Jacksonville, Lake City, Savannah, Macon, Georgia, Valdosta, Atlanta. We are talking about a major wind event here in southern Florida spreading inland along the whole peninsula. This is going to knock power out to millions upon millions of people all the way from the Florida Keys into the interior southeast along with rainfall amounts which we'll take a look at here now. Rainfall amounts will be anywhere from 6 inches up to possibly 10 inches. Some isolated areas could receive up to 15. And again, this area of heavy rain issued by the WPC may need to be shifted westward with their next, next update because the forecast did change today. Again, if you're in the interior southeast, here's a look at the wind, the forecasted wind speeds by the European and Atlanta. Atlanta sits about right here between Fulton and DeKalb County. And those are wind gusts to hurricane force, sustained high tropical storm and gusting to hurricane force. Tampa is not is not safer than anybody else right now. Let me go back to this map. Based on this image, Tampa would be receiving wind gust over 80, 90 miles per hour. Now the storm is going to weaken a little bit as it moves in, but again, it's not going to be a fast uh, drop in wind speeds. It's going to be a very gradual, slow process for this storm to wind down. So. I'm not showing these graphics to scare anybody. I'm not trying to hype this up. We're talking three days out now. All the models are converging. The National Hurricane Center has higher confidence in their forecast. And we want to get this information out that if you're staying behind in Florida, be ready for a powerful hurricane. Most of you will receive winds over 80 miles per hour. A lot of you down in southern Florida and the Keys could receive sustained winds of 100 to 150 for a few hours, especially right around the eye wall. And you still have a couple days to rush final preparations to completion to make sure you're ready for the storm. Okay. Um, finally, the most important part of this video, I think today is going to be um, the National Weather Service. They do a fabulous job of forecasting your local weather conditions. Go to weather.gov for me. Put in weather.gov in your browser. Put in your zip code or the name of your city. So, for example, I'm just going to put in Miami, Florida. And this will show you, you know, Miami, Florida is under hurricane watch. If you click on that, you can read the full statement with all the details specific to your area. You can read about the storm surge. You can go down and look at the exact forecast. But what I like the best is you can scroll all the way down to the bottom right of the page. Click on this graph here. You may need to click on forward two days so you can see uh, the time frame when the hurricane's here. And you can see right now for Miami, starting um, 5 a.m. Sunday morning, winds gusting to 106. 8 in the morning, gusting to 155 miles per hour. 151 miles per hour, three hours later at 11. So put in your zip code, put in your city. You can find out the exact forecast. And this will change every few hours as new data comes in, but it will give you an idea of what the National Weather Service is thinking for your area, okay? I hope this was helpful. This is a serious storm. In my opinion, it's going to be more serious than Andrew. It's about two to three times the size of Andrew. Again, the website is weather.gov. 
weather.gov, or you can just search in Google National Weather Service, okay? Um, we'll be here at the Hurricane Tracker app to keep you updated throughout the duration. And we just, uh, our thoughts and prayers are with everybody who's being, who was impacted by the storm in the Caribbean and for everybody who will likely be um, impacted over the next few days. I'm in Atlanta. We booked a hotel room in Birmingham just in case this forecast is right. I have three young boys. We may want to book it west of Birmingham just so we have power and internet and things like that. So I don't think a more westerly track is possible at this point. It could, I think it could ride the west coast of the peninsula, but I think chances of it getting into the Gulf now are less than 5%. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you watching. I hope this was helpful, and uh, we appreciate your support. And uh, we'll be back with more updates as we get closer to landfall of Hurricane Irma. Take care, everybody.